This problem walkthrough video will demonstrate how to use Microsoft Excel to create an exponentially smooth forecast model for predicting demand for dairy products. Here's the data for our problem. United Dairies Inc. supplies milk to several independent grocers throughout Dade County, Florida. Managers at United Dairies want to develop a forecast of the number of half gallons of milk sold per week. Sales data for the past 24 weeks are shown. The data has been collected in a Microsoft Excel file. So download the spreadsheet and complete the following requirements. Requirement A asks us to choose the correct time series plot, and requirement B directs us to use exponential smoothing with an alpha of 0.3 to develop a forecast of demand for week 25 and determine the resulting MSE or mean squared error. Let's open up our downloaded Excel data file and complete the requirements. Here we can see our initial weekly sales for the past 24 weeks, and in cell B1, we have the alpha value of 0.3 to use for our exponentially smooth forecast model. Requirement A asks us to determine the correct time series plot that reflects this data. So in order to pick the right one, we actually have to create a plot in Excel. I'll select cells J5 through R23 and shade them green to provide a space to place our graph. Start by selecting all the weekly sales from cells A3 through B27, including the headings. Click the Insert menu from the menu bar, and in the Charts group in the ribbon, click the Recommend Charts button to bring up the Insert Chart dialog box. I'll select the third line graph here and click OK, and I'll place it into the green area I just created and resize it. I'll change the title from Sales by double-clicking on it, and I'll call it Sales Time Series Plot. Now I want to add some axis titles, so click on the chart, and in the ribbon on the far left, the Chart Options group should appear. Click the Add Chart Element button, then Axis Titles, and then Primary Horizontal to add a placeholder for the x-axis. Repeat that process again, and this time select Primary Vertical to add a placeholder for the y-axis. I'll rename the x-axis title by double-clicking on it and label it Sales Volume. I'll do the same for the x-axis and label it Week. Now let's give the graph some markers. Double-click on the blue plot line, and on the left you should see the Format Data Series panel. Click the Fill in Line icon, then Marker, then expand the marker options. Click the button next to Built In, and click the drop-down arrow to select your favorite marker type. I'll go with Square because I'm a rebel. Let's also change the vertical scale of the graph so it doesn't have so much white space. Click anywhere on the Y axis, and in the Format Axis panel, click the icon that looks like a bar graph. Then, for the bounds, let's set the minimum to be 2000. Excel then automatically adjusted the maximum to be 3800 for me, which is fine, so I'll leave it at that. You can scale the graph however you like. And that's it. Now we have a plot to compare against the options presented and identify the correct one. But before we do that, let's go ahead with requirement B and create the exponentially smooth forecast and predict the sales for week 25. Let's format our work area by adding some column headings in cells C3, D3, and E3. I'll enter forecast in cell C3. In cell D3, I'll type forecast, then option enter to enter a new line. And then I'll type error, so the heading is forecast error. Then in cell E3, I'll type forecast, option enter, then error, shift 6 to enter the little exponent sign, and then the number 2, so we end up with forecast error squared. And I'll make them boldface. Next, I'll select cells C2 through E27 and shade them blue. I'm purposely excluding the cells in row 4 here. Now for the forecast calculation. We're asked to use exponential smoothing to create this forecast. The formula for an exponentially smooth forecast is y hat t plus 1 equals alpha times yt plus 1 minus alpha times y hat t, where yt plus 1 is the forecast of the time series for period t plus 1, yt is the actual value of the forecast in period t, y hat t is the forecast of the time series for period t, and alpha is the smoothing constant, which is between 0 and 1, and represents the weights of how much we want to emphasize the current period's actual sales. This simply means that the forecast for the next week's sales is equal to alpha times this week's actual sales plus 1 minus alpha times this week's forecast. Now with exponential smoothing, we have to kickstart our model with an initial forecast before we can actually start applying the formula. 
Generally, the first period's forecast is equal to the last period's actual sales. So the week two forecast sales will be week one actual sales. So click on cell C5, type the equal sign, and select the actual sales from week one of 2,700 units in cell B4. Now we'll apply the formula for the rest of the forecasts, but I'll calculate it manually first. The sales forecast for week three is equal to the week two actual sales of 3,050 units, weighted 30%, plus the week two forecast of 2,700 units, weighted 70%, which is 100% minus 30%, or 2,805 units. So now let's see if Excel produces the same result. Click on cell C6, type the equal sign, select the alpha constant of 0.3 in cell B1 and press F4 to lock the cell reference so we can copy our final formula without producing errors. Type the multiplication sign and select the actual week two sales of 3,050 units in cell B5, followed by a plus sign and then an opening parenthesis. Type one, then the minus sign and select the alpha constant in cell B1 again. Press F4 to lock it in and then type a closing parenthesis followed by the multiplication sign. Then select the week two forecast of 2,700 units in cell C5. Press enter or return and I end up with 2,805 units which means I did the calculation correctly. Now let's apply a consistent format to cells B5 and B6. So I'll highlight those and choose the format cells icon in the number group in the home ribbon, choose number for the format, click the thousand separator box and make sure it's set to two decimal places and click OK. Now I'll copy the forecast formula down to all the other weeks. So I'll click back on cell C6 and double click the little green square to autofill all the way down to cell C27 or week 24, where I end up with a forecast of 3,472.37. Now for the forecast error, which is simply the actual sales less the forecast sales in any given week. I'll click on cell D5, type the equal sign, and select the actual week two sales of 3,050 units in cell B5, then type a minus sign, and then select the week two forecast in cell C5. Press enter or return, and the forecast error for week two will be 350. Then, for the forecast error squared, I'll click on cell E5, type an equal sign, select the forecast error in cell D5, type the exponent symbol Shift 6, then 2 to square it. Press return, and the forecast error is 122,500. Now we can copy both of those error formulas down, so I'll select cells D5 and E5 and double click the little green square to autofill down to the rest of the periods. Now for the week 25 forecast. I'll enter 25 in cell A28, then copy the last forecast calculation from cell C27 down one more cell to C28. I'll shade that cell green to differentiate it from the other amounts. Therefore, the week 25 forecast is 3,504.66. Finally, we want the MSE for the second part of requirement B. I'll enter the words total and MSE in cells D30 and D31 and highlight our answer cell E30 blue and E31 green. For the total, click on cell E20, type the equal sign, then type sum and press the tab key. Select the cell range E5 through E27, or you could type it manually. Enter a closing parenthesis and press enter or return, and now the total is over 1.22 million. Lastly, for the MSE, which is the average, click on cell E31, type the equal sign, then type average to bring up the function. Press the tab key or select it from the list and highlight the same cell range E5 through E27. Press enter or return and the mean squared error is 53,139.07. And now we're done and we can summarize our results. For requirement A, from the plot options presented compared against the plot we created in Excel, we can see that option D is the correct plot and the data appear to follow an increasing pattern. For requirement B, the exponentially smooth forecast, rounded to the nearest whole number since we can't sell a partial unit, is 3,505 half gallons of milk, and the MSE is 53,139.